Hi everyone and welcome to all the new subscribers. Before the fossil hunting starts, I've got three questions I'm going to answer. So uh, there's three questions that came up quite a bit in the last two weeks since that uh, big crab prep video, this one. Uh, since this video went quite viral, uh, I think Lad Bible picked it up in a few other sites. The three questions I'll answer is, how do I know there's a crab in this concretion? Uh, how did the crab get in the concretion? How was it formed? And why is the crab in such good condition once it's exposed? I'm going to do my best to answer those three questions. They are theories, so if you have a better explanation, please get in touch or leave a comment. I'd really love to learn a bit uh, more about the, the process of how a concretion is formed. The most popular question by far was, how did I know there's a crab inside? <laughs> uh, obviously it was covered in rock, so you couldn't really see much of the crab at all. Uh, the clue was at the edges here. It's not going to show up well here, but if you look here, the legs have actually been cut off. You know, they're missing the end parts over there on that side and on that side. Uh, so what I look for is the leg rings. Don't know if you can make it out over there, but those they're actually leg rings visible on that side there. It might show up a bit better in you know, one of the other concretions I found recently. So there's a crab inside this concretion as well. And the way I could see, well, what got me interested first is the shape. You can see it's got that oval shape. It's not too flat. So it is wider than it is high. That's the first clue. So I picked it up, had a close look. And let me zoom in over here. And those are the leg rings I've been talking about. You can see there's three over there. And if you look closely, they are a different color to the rock and a different texture. So they like a, a whitish brown color, almost like the same color as the side of that one over there. And if you look on this side, it's got matching ones over there. It's actually got four sticking out there. So all four are sticking out there. There might be one inside here um, that will have the whole leg. So there's only three sticking out on that side and four on that side. In short, what I'm looking for is <laughs> this potato shaped rock. And then I look on the, the long sides for the legs sticking out. And are crab fossils found on all beaches? Uh, no, they're only found on certain beaches. I know there's some in New Zealand, there's some in Washington state, there's some in Japan, and there's some in Indonesia and probably a few other places as well. I know there's some in Canada. The second question uh, is why is the crab in such good condition? It's so complete. And you know, that's a fair question because if a crab dies on the ocean floor, you'd expect it to be scavenged uh, by fish, other crabs, maybe shells even, um, all sorts of worms and things. And the crabs over here in these concretions are in really great shape. They, they mostly complete except for the legs that have, you know, uh, not formed in the concretion. The theory I've got is that something buried the crabs. Uh, to keep the scavengers away from them. And one of the ways this could happen is um, earthquakes or tsunamis creating a turbidity current. So if you look here on this little <laughs> diagram I've got here, uh, the crabs on the ocean floor down here, the bottom left, and a tsunami wave comes in, doesn't disturb them at all because, you know, they're in deep water and the tsunami wave doesn't do too much. But then it, the tsunami wave hits the beach it does a lot of erosion on the beach and you know the backflow of the tsunami wave actually brings the dip, debris down um, the embankment let's call it the uh, the bank let's say there's a bank there and all that mud and everything just covers the crabs and that's why we would see them in layers like we see at uh, the beach i go to you can actually see the concretions in layers in the cliff so that that's one way uh, new zealand does have quite a few earthquakes so this is quite possible it could be earthquakes or tsunamis causing this turbidity current which is really just a current of water full of mud um, flowing down over across the crabs and burying them then a really interesting question is how do these concretions form <laughs> i've had quite a few people think that this is cement and that the crabs are just in the cement and it, it does really look like cement, but it's a, it's a natural forming um, material, a concretion. And <laughs> bear with me while I try and sketch this out.
<laughs> Look, my crab's not going to win any prizes. Um, but let's say this is a concretion uh, in a cliff. So the cliffs here, this is siltstone. This is the concretion, and the concretion is actually calcium carbonate, CaCO3. So calcium carbonate and siltstone all mixed together into this really solid, rock hard. This is really hard. This is, yeah, it's, it's like a rock, uh, rock hard concretion. So there are a couple of theories of how concretions form, and the theory, you know, that makes the most sense to me is that um, all organic matter is made of carbon. So quite a bit of carbon in the crab there. And when the crab was buried, however that happened, um, it started decomposing. So this carbon actually created HCO3. So HCO3 is bicarbonate. Uh, the H and the O obviously come from water H2O and the C comes from the the carbon in the crab as it decomposes it's creating this HCO3 uh, the bicarbonate and there's a lot of calcium um, in the water and if you want to get really technical it's got a positive 2 plus and this has got a minus so the the bicarbonate's got a, a negative charge here, so it's negative ion the calcium's positive so a positive ion and together they react and they start reacting from the middle here. So it's it's forming in these little layers as it reacts together to form this calcium carbonate. And when the C, so when the decomposition or whatever that process, when this carbon is exhausted, it will actually stop. And sometimes the legs will be inside. Most of the time I find the legs are outside when the reaction stops. And when this rock weathers out of the cliff, the legs stay behind and the rock falls down onto the beach where we find them. And that's my theory. <laughs> it's very simplified. I'm, I'm probably missing a whole bunch of things. But the main thing is the carbon or the decomposition kickstarts this process where uh, bicarb is formed. There's a lot of calcium uh, from the shells and things in the ocean water that reacts and forms calcium carbonate which is really really hard and it forms it starts close to the crab and it's forming um, further and further away and when it's exhausted the carbon the reaction stops sometimes the legs are inside sometimes they're outside um, and this is the same for other materials not just crab so if there's a bit of bone there let's say there's a whale decomposing there's a lot of um, carbon in that whale carcass so the reaction is quite big and that can carry on for quite a while uh, because the bones are so big in a whale sometimes you know you'd find a bone po poking out of the concretion like that I'd love to hear some feedback on this <laughs> there's probably someone that's done a paper on this uh, that's got really good insights but yeah that's that's my understanding of the process I hope that answers some questions uh, like I say those are my theories um, if you've got a different theory or you've got better understanding of the processes, please let me know. I'm always happy to learn. Let's get to some fossil hunting. Hey Ron, it's a beautiful morning on the beach over here. No wind, it's warm. It's just a great day to be fossil hunting. Let's see what we can find. The sand level doesn't look too high. Might be able to find some new spots. I'm sure there's going to be the usual crabs around, but I'm hoping for something a bit more rare. Maybe something mammal or bird. found a broken crab or two and a few bits of bone and I think I finally found something good or interesting at least look over there what is that hmm 
think that's bone. Yeah, that looks to be a small bone cluster. Can't tell you what's inside there. It's just a few random bits of bone sticking out. And it's one of those really, really hard concretions. <laughs> but I mean, that bone, I wonder where that connects to. I'll keep it in case it's part of a skull. This is where I found that tiny spider crab as well. So maybe there's a few of those around. This is where I found that tiny spider crab, so maybe there's a few of those around as well. I'm not finding an awful lot over here. Found another bone cluster. A bit bigger than the previous one, but nothing I can identify, nothing skull looking. It's a few bits of bone going through it. Yeah. A few long shaped ones there and there. Nothing super exciting in it. It's it's a bit big to carry back just on a, <laughs> a maybe. And then found this broken crab. That's the bottom. Um, yeah, the claws would have been up top there. That's the stomach area. Nothing left on the top. Probably not going to take that home. I'll leave it here on top of a rock for someone else. I just found this one. This is the most complete crab I've found in ages. Look, there's the crab legs right over there where my thumb is. I can see one, two, three there. And three on the other side. And nothing else is sticking out, so that's going to be a really, really good crab to prep. Here's an interesting rock. It's full of tiny shells. That might be worth taking home and just putting it up some acid and seeing if anything falls out. Maybe there's some teeth hiding in there. <laughs> Very strange. Something in that rock. Ah, I thought it was going to be a crab. I actually don't know what that is. <laughs> what is that? I wonder if it could be the root of a really big shark tooth. <laughs> That'd be quite something. That'd be enormous. <laughs> Sand level is very high today, so I'm not finding much. But I'm taking a close look at whatever's visible. Some bryozoa, I think, coral, some more bryozoa. Or coral. Yeah, something really interesting actually. Well, look there, that looks like a leaf. Almost like a leaf from a conifer or something. I think you can make out the stem there where my thumb is. Yeah, that really looks like a, a leaf. I've never found a leaf fossil before. I wonder if this is my first one. I wonder if it's... Maybe it could be a coral or a seaweed or something like that. A marine plant. But that looks so much like a conifer leaf. Gonna have to email this to a few people. Yeah, it's really cool.
the fuzz from today. Start with this little one. Thought it could be a shark tooth, <laughs> like a cross section of a shark tooth, but I'm not that sure. It's not going to prep well, so I'm going to try and acid prep it. Um, I'll cover this in some consolidant and then put it on some vinegar, acetic acid. Uh, it's going to take <laughs> quite a while, so I'll do an update once it's prepped a month or so. Yes, that really <laughs> nice crab that I showed earlier. You can see there are some leg holes there. And some matching ones on the other side. And nothing else sticking out, so it's going to be a really nice crab to prep. This is that bone cluster. You can see there's a bit of bone sticking out there. Long flat one in there. But bit sticking out there. Still a little bit there. Um, I'm not convinced it's whale. I don't know what it is, but yeah, it's quite delicate bones. It'd be worth prepping as well. It's also going to have to be acid prepped. This is such a hard concretion. This is my favorite find of the day, this little bit of plant material. If you look at it under the microscope, you can actually see the plant cells still in those little cavities there. And this is a modern one. <laughs> um, just to kind of show what I think it is, it's kind of an impression. Um, of one of those so the plant material is gone and it's just kind of left behind uh, the impressions the mold of it which has then been filled up by looks like some kind of calcite or something at least you can still see the plant cells in there and I think it's um, similar to the Norfolk pine this area was deep water so I think 200 meters deep so it's amazing that a piece of tiny plant material like that would have survived and made a fossil. Thanks so much for watching everyone. Um, if you've got any other questions, uh, keep them coming. I'll try my best and answer them. Uh, if I don't know the answer, I'll try and get in contact with someone that does. Really happy with this little bit of plant material, especially because this is my first one from that area. <laughs> Stay safe out there. I'll see you on the next hunt.